Hello everyone. So in this video, let us talk about a problem from lead code. The problem is implement str str function. So I'll tell you that in simple terms, you have to implement this function and what this function do is that you're given two strings, a needle and a haystack. So if you know what is a needle, you always know what is a needle and haystack is like a, a pile of a horse eating food. Uh, it's something like that. So uh, it's a, like saying that you have to find out a needle in a haystack. So it's like, it's very difficult to do that. So it's on the same logic. So what you're given is that you are given a needle and a haystack. Now you have to return what is the index of the first occurring of the needle. So in simple terms, like whatever story is it there, you just have to find out the first occurrence of a string inside a bigger string. And if, if you do not find that out, then you have to return minus one that that particular like needle or like a particular string is not present inside the bigger string. And if it present, then you have to like print out the first occurrence of that. That's overall logic, like not the logic, the overall question part. So, uh, and you don't have to use out any of the like inbuilt functions, whatever you can use. So <clears throat> these are the haystacks. So as you can see that this is the bigger string that is the haystack that is hello. And you have to find out a smaller substring if a particular small string exists in that particular big string. So LL exists here, LL. So it, it starts at the index two and so on. So this BBA doesn't exist here. So the answer is minus one. So you can pause this video and there are multiple string matching algorithms. So it's just like, like a string matching algorithm. So in string matching algorithm, there are like Ray, Rab and Cap, KMP, Z algorithm. There's also brute force algorithm as well. So if you try to use a brute force here, it like the length can be pretty large. So it uh, might fail as well, but what you can like, but uh, it's always like beneficial to use the standard uh, string match algorithms here. So there is Labincap and uh, KMP and uh, Z algorithm. So you can prefer and use any one of them. Then all of them will be very helpful and you will learn a lot of things here. So I can have used any one of here, but what I have preferred is that there's one algorithm that is a Z algorithm. And that is one of the most underrated algorithm by most underrated underrated. I mean that it is not used very, uh, in like very easily or very frequently in different questions, but it is very simple code and it can be used anywhere. Though I'm not actually explaining out Z algorithm in this video, but uh, if you want to know what is the internal, I will make a separate video out of it. But in Z algorithm, what you just have to do is that if you want to find out the occurrence of a particular substring in a given string, you just append both the strings using a special character and then pass that like uh, pass that new string that you have made by appending the substring dollar and the original string into a character, it will return you the Z array and that Z array, like, like the Z array actually de denotes out the occurrence of the, like the prefix, like the, whatever is the prefix of that particular string that you have, uh, whether that prefix exists in that particular string or not. So I'll tell you with, with one of the simple examples, it will, it will become more clear to you. But you can have write down, like if you want a Z algorithm or if you want any of the algorithms, you can go to cplgorithms.com. And I've also used the simple Z algorithm. So Z algorithm, you can just directly go there and uh, you can just use the very, like the first code that, that's popped up there. So where's the code, where's the code? Yeah. That's the code. That's the code. So it's just like a two, three liner. I think no, no, that's a trivial code. That's the code. So that's the implementation of the algorithm. And it's a very, like a very small code. And I've just used, as you can see that this code only in the, like in the problem, like in the solution part, the same Z function. So I've just copied it from here. And uh, now you just have to pass out the modified string into this Z algorithm function string. So what I've done is that I have passed, like I have formed a new string. So the new string is I've taken the substring or the string that I want to find out at the needle. I have appended a special character that is hash, like a, maybe dollar you can append a hash or whatever you want. And then you can uh, like append the actual string, like the haste, haystack. Then pass that particular new string inside this Z that function. And it will do something. I will make a different video out of it, but it will return you a Z array. And then in that Z array, you just have to find out in that Z array, whether there exists an index that is equal to the length of the needle. Okay. Because wherever the length of the needle exists in that Z array, it actually means that the Z array, like the needle exists at that particular position. And you just have to return that particular index. That's the logic for this problem. Now you can watch different videos around Z algorithm, but that's the, 
and that runs in actually O of n plus m tangomicity. n plus m means the total length of the needle plus the total length of the haystack. So the multiplication of that, not the like the addition of that. So it's like a total of O of n tangomicity only. So that is also very very fast and efficient. So and if you run this out this code, it will run in like zero milliseconds. So it's very fast only. So if I just just overview briefly what Z algorithms does. So let's say that if you have a string, let's say a a a, and if you append let's say dollar of it, and then you are searching it in let's say b a a b a a a. Now you have this string, and if you want to just return a z array of this. So the Z array actually returns out. Okay, it just returns out what is the like what is the longest prefix I can find out starting at this index. Okay, so if I match out like strings starting from this and from the prefix, what is the common maximum length I can get? So as you can see that if I start from here and if I start from here, the maximum common length I can get is Two are matching, so I can get I can add in two there. If I can start from here, and I can start from here again, the maximum length I can get a match is a and a, so I can get a match of a one. If I can start from here as well as from here, the maximum match I can get is zero because it start from b, it become start from a. The maximum length from here as well as from here I can get is three a's that are completely matching out, so three. Starting from here as well as from here, I can get of length two because two are here and like two a's are here, so two and one. So what you can directly see is that it is matching out the prefix and the string that you have. And thus what you'll get eventually is that you're obviously looking for this string in this string. Okay. And because this string is of length three and we are matching out the prefix in this, wherever I get the length three, it means that there's a continuous length of length three of matching a prefix and here. And because the prefix length is three and I found out the length three here, which means that I found out the prefix there. On prefix means the substring that I'm looking for, and if I find a substring, I just return the index. So because it's a modified string, and I have to, so what I've added, I've added the string length, like the needle length or like whatever substring I'm looking for, plus a dollar sign in the original string. So if I want to get the original index back, whatever index I will I will get in the modified string, I have to subtract out this much index from that. And this much index is the length of the needle minus one because of the dollar sign. So when I got actually the final index, when I Z of I, like whatever indexes I get from Z array, if at any moment it matches with the needle size, okay, like the substring that I'm looking for, I'll just return I, the index I am on, subtract to the needle size as well as one because of the dollar sign. And just return that index, and that's the actual index in the original string, the largest string that we want to look for. And that's the answer. So that's the overall logic. Now it's a challenge for you to like write down the same code for KMP as well as Rev Incap as well. So this is the Zell algorithm eventually. So you can like use uh, CPL algorithms to find out those algorithms and try to write it down of your own. So thank you for watching this video till the end. I will see you next one. I'll keep coding and bye.